Yeah. There's Grandma now. Okay, gentlemen, we're gonna. We got two more Honda carriage doors to secure. And uh, break out the prop blades. They gotta be individually primed. It's set aside. You just got to hold there with the fellas with these gooseneck tweezers and for to give it a grab, like right there. There you go. That's why I say that world famous accelerator comes in and give it a spray, and there you go. But uh, I'm not too familiar with that type of uh, material. Okay guys, we've got this one last undercarriage door. And uh, before we start applying the final paint job on this aircraft, I'm gonna add the I'm gonna add the the, um, the retracting linkage, which closes the landing gear doors when the landing gear uh, retracts inside the fuselage, inside the SLs. And they're gonna be airbrushed uh, terrier green, the wells are. And then I'm going to be masked off with some tissue to keep them over spread getting inside of them when it comes time for the aluminum. Hmm, not very cooperative in it. Uh, I'll just get the hold a little longer. There we go, boys. When it dries, I'll go back and reinforce it with some more ACC. Make sure it's in there real good. Many tires fit like this. Tires got to be primed and painted. I'm just dry fitting them on the axles here, so they see how they do. And they do quite nicely, and I just pray to God that I don't smack this model or it don't take a fall. But like I say, guys, bigger the model, the bigger the model, the clumsy it gets. They get big and clumsy. Again, fellas, I can't stress anymore. That although this thing may be simple to put together, but it's a lot of preparation to make it go. And uh, I will not advise this kid at all for the novice at heart, because working with resin, fellas, is not is a is a whole different world compared uh, opposed to plastic and balsa wood, or even paper. And it has no forgiveness, fellas. Resin has no forgiveness. As you can see, guys, you've got all the runner carriage on there. Once that undercarriage dry, land, carriage, uh, uh, landing gear dries, landing gear doors dries, I'm going to go ahead and give it a coat of ACC. I'll let her set for a couple of good hours and I'll test fit her on her, on the, uh, on the building mat and see how she stands. And uh, I got a feeling I'll probably be making a pogo for it, which ain't no big deal, guys. Because like I said earlier in the video, all C124 Glow Masters. Tell, tell, even uh, even Super Constellation, C54 Sky Masters, D6, D, DC6s. Uh, they all have pogos on them to keep them tail from going down on the ground. Because there was an incident that happened back in 1962. Uh, I believe it was at McCord's Field, Air Force Base. They had Air Force Day out there where all the visitors, people out there, went up to the airport and visited there. The, the airplanes and looked at them and came aboard them and they didn't have no pogo on the Globemaster so naturally everybody went aboard the Globemaster by going up entering the front the front end because they had the clamshell doors open and they had the the, the ramp that was down that, that fascinates the cargo and the troops 
and uh, they all went aboard. And a lot of them went aft and went through the airplane out the center of gravity because you got to realize human weight is just like cargo. I mean, you got, you distribute a lot of weight that's not the, to the center of the aircraft. It's going to fall down on its tail. That's exactly what it did. The whole airplane just went down on its tail, killing about four people. Um, you had four people standing underneath the tail of the aircraft over here. When this aircraft went down, you can imagine what the people looked like after it hit them. Nothing left but a blood stain. So a lot of them had pogos there for make sure that don't happen. You got to make sure the cargo master's really got to make quite certain check and double check and recheck that he don't go out and um, that he don't go out and uh, and uh, get the uh, organize the um, the cargo and keep it from becoming um, off center of gravity of the aircraft, keep it from, from teetering down. Okay, guys, these are prop bosses right here I'm pulling out there for uh, A model and C model. The A model had four blades, the C model had three. So I made an inventory on the blades. After finding out, they shorted me out on that, shorted me out on a few things on this airplane. I had to remake them myself. And uh, that took that took some time right there. So I went and made a complete you know, uh, inventory. And everything was here. Okay, guys. Looks like these the blades are pretty much there. Okay, I got two propeller assemblies there done. And um, and we'll see if we, if we get four out of this thing, we'll be all right. But I got the air model kit. This is all by, it's all vacuum form. Yeah, it's probably the first Globemaster that ever came out. And, uh, it's all there, fellas. Beautiful. And they gave me a whole bunch of other C, um, C model uh, bosses. Somebody else is going to be really mad when they find out that the uh, give me short out of those parts. I got a feeling they just mixed all these parts up and threw it in a bag, and that was it. That's about what they've done. Okay, guys, starting out with C here. We're going to trim this off here. I dry fitted a couple on these hubs right here. They seem to go on quite well. Right now I'm trimming off the ends of these so they go all the way in these little holes. So now right here, you can see right here, fellas, all these holes, this resin bo prop bosses, they have been pre jilled already. So all you gotta do is take a blaze and glue them in. You gotta make quite certain that the blades are turned exactly 2% to the left. That way you, know, you have, uh, you have the, the right pitch to it. And uh, that will give you some problems if you don't. And, uh, excuse my hands, fellas. I'll take your gloves off. It's hard for me to handle these little blades. These darn gloves, they get these gloves on. Gloves work pretty good everywhere else, fellas, but just, uh, when these gloves, you more or less glue your gloves together and glue them to the part. 
and I got that pot blade turned two percent to the left that way it'll have its own pitch there you go More ACC right here. Hold there to that resin. The there you go, fellas. Like I say, it'll take one for that resin to grab the, the ACC to grab this resin. And you gotta make sure the props are good and straight too, fellas, when you're putting them in there. here needs a little persuasion. Boy, that one could apply too good, don't it? You gotta cut off a little bit more off this, uh, you got a locating pin, and you need to be trimmed off a little bit more. So make sure the edge of this propeller here will fit right on the boss. A little time consuming, fellas. Somehow this booth's not grabbing too good over here. Just gotta hold there a little second, fellas. You gotta make sure you get that 2%. There you go. But you gotta take that blade, make sure it's turned in a little more this way for the pitch of the wind as, you, as it turns. The blades in the Glowmaster are reversible. When this thing came in for landing, carrying 74 plus thousand pounds of cargo, plus the weight of the aircraft itself, carrying personnel. It takes a lot of thrust to be able to slow this big boy down when it comes down a runway. So naturally what they do, once all three gear landing gears touch the weight, touch the ground, they reverse the possible breakage. There you go, fellas. I got one of those blades down. They come back over here. And do the other one. Again, these blades are very fragile, fellas. Don't take much to break these blades. So you got to exercise the fact that these things are. You got to respect because they're very, very, uh, very, very, very fragile. I think I've gone. That thing don't want to stick, don't it? Well, we're gonna make it stick.
Let that set by like that for a while, fellas. I think it's pretty well the way I want it. There you go, something to grab now. That one, no problem. There's nothing bad about this, fellas. I wish they would have uh, made this thing all one assembly on these props. Well done, fellas. Let that dry a little bit. It should be done. Okay, guys, there's no sense of going on any further with the uh, propellers uh, on here. It's going to take a little while to get these things on, as you can see. So, like I say, it's going to be a short video, probably two parts instead of uh, my normal three or four on this thing. So, what I'm going to do is let this thing set. I'm going to go ahead and come back and get these props uh, all glued together. On the next. Uh, the next video is gonna be a short video too, fellas. What's gonna be is gonna is gonna be the uh, complete uh, the finishing of the uh, uh, the props, and I'm gonna add the, the tracking link just to the uh, wheel wells, and they'll be all airbrush painted, interior green. Then I'm gonna go back and get this airplane another prime after this is all masked off. Then we'll go ahead and we'll start on the the final color scheme. Uh, probably be about four or five videos on that. And I'm going to I'm trying to get this thing anywhere from three to four coats of aluminum a plate. So I went down to my hobby shop. They bought eight more bottles of uh, of this aluminum. This tester's model master aluminum right here. And uh, I got a bunch of those. Got two here. And another six more I got. So I figure it's going to take probably about four bottles. To do this thing up since it's a big aircraft. I remember last time on my last Globe Master, I think I used four on that too. Okay, guys, uh, well, swing the camera around yours truly and finish up the video here. All right, again. Okay, guys, here I am again. Okay, fellas, uh, this concludes video number four. And, uh, uh, like I said, I'm get back with these props. It's going to be a time-consuming deal. I don't want to stretch this video up and get you guys bored watching me fighting a bunch of propeller blades. So I got one done. It's drying. It seems like to me it's uh, it's getting nice and hard right now. But I'm going to give it another coat anyway the HTC and make sure it's good and good and strong in there. And I'm um, test fit the undercarriage make sure that's all done. And uh, so next